All right, we have some breaking news coming in related to this very story. We're learning that the parents of the deceased young girl are going to move the Supreme Court requesting that doctors of their choice be allowed to conduct the second post-mortem. The second post-mortem is scheduled for today by a team of doctors currently that have been appointed by the court. Remember, the family's plea had already been to include a doctor of their choice to participate in the re-post-mortem. It was turned down by the Madras High Court. The judge had said that the post-mortem should be conducted by a team of three doctors to be appointed by the court and that it must be videographed. Uh, the girl's father, it had been said earlier, would be allowed along with his counsel if he wanted to go inside while the post-mortem was being conducted. So that's what the Madras High Court had had to say when they'd taken a look at this. That's perhaps why today the parents of the deceased students are attempting to move the Supreme Court and in that they're requesting the doctors of their choice be allowed to conduct the second post-mortem. Remember, as uh, that package, that story had shown you a little while earlier, the first post-mortem had shown proof of sustained injuries. Now, what the second post-mortem could show, that remains the question. My colleague Purnima with us right now to bring us more details. Purnima, if you could bring our audiences more details here, on what grounds had the Madras High Court earlier turned down the family's demand, because the family had made this demand a little while earlier, that they wanted a doctor of their choice. On what grounds had the Madras High Court turned it down at that point? Well, the Madras High Court uh, said that uh, the doctors appointed by the court uh, can conduct the, the post-mortem and in the presence of the father and the lawyer uh, and also video uh, uh, video records the entire process. But that, uh, the, the parents were not ha happy. They wanted, uh, they wanted uh, to ensure that the doctors of their choice conduct the post-mortem because they allege foul play and they want uh, someone they trust to conduct the postmortem, but uh, because uh, the Madras High Court had earlier considered their plea and uh, uh, and uh, you know ordered for a second uh, postmortem, uh, and uh, with the team of doctors appointed by them, they uh, thought that this is a fair and transparent way. Therefore, they rejected the plea, saying that uh, it will be videographed and there will be no foul play, and the family can also be present um, to ensure that. Uh, uh, to ensure that all goes well and added that after the postmortem is conducted the body of the girl should be collected and the family should not create any trouble however uh, the family is not convinced the autopsy uh, the autopsy uh, was all set to be conducted uh, late last evening but that did not happen because the family uh, is not convinced so they have decided to take uh, the, the case uh, to the apex court and uh, request for a second postmortem to be done uh, with the doctors of their choice uh, we'll have to wait and see if they get a, a verdict in their favor. But at the moment, the girl's body is still lying in the hospital. They have not collected the body and they do not want the autopsy uh, to be conducted by a team of doctors appointed by the judge. Uh, they clear the alleged foul play and they uh, want uh, justice for the daughters. So they want to trust the doctors who would conduct the postmortem, which is why there has been a delay um, from yesterday till now. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if the apex court uh, considers their plea. But at the moment, uh, not all is well as far as the Kalla Kursi case is concerned. Uh, we are, The parents still are not happy with the way things have progressed, with the way investigations have progressed, even though the principal, the secretary, the correspondent, and two teachers mentioned by the girl in the suicide note, even though all of them have been arrested and sent to judicial custody for 15 days, parents are still not convinced. They want a, a fair and thorough autopsy report to be out to, uh, to know the truth of what really happened uh, with regards to their daughter's death. Purnima, thank you for those updates. Stay with us, though. Uh, for our audiences, very quickly, we want to play out something for you. Uh, this is what the SP in the area had to say. Take a look. சாந்தி மாடம் உங்களுக்கு நான் ரிக்வஸ்ட் வைக்கிறேன் எனக்கு இந்த இந்த வருஷத்துக்கு கட்டின ஃபீஸ் மட்டும் எங்கள் அம்மா கிட்ட திருப்பி கொடுத்துருங்க புக் ஃபீஸ் ஹாஸ்டல் ஃபீஸும் கூட கொடுத்துருங்க 
All right, as you might remember earlier, my colleague Ritu is also with us to bring us an update. Let's go over to her right now. Ritu, we just heard right now from the superintendent of the police in the area. He was reading what I believe was uh, the girl who committed suicide's letter out for the media. You can hear her make some of the claims that we've discussed on our show today. Ritu, I wanted to ask if for our audiences, you could lay out the timeline of events. Uh, our colleague right now, Purnima, was pointing out the large gap between when this incident took place and when the protests happened and the fact that the Madras High Court is looking at all of those protests as perhaps organized. Could you lay out the timeline for us so that we understand more of why the High Court is saying that? Yes. Post the death by suicide of the 17-year-old girl, you see these parents all on the campus where they are demanding the justice and a lot more that they say there's a fall game behind. Uh, her death is what the parents are alleging, but that which when she committed the suicide on Wednesday, the family also alleged that uh, they were very much lately been, uh, 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 been informed about her death and they believe there is a lot beyond this death. Is something that the family is saying and they are up in arms that you see on the Wednesday they protested as well but the protest that was being done from them was very much peacefully conducted but later point uh, just couple of days and you see on Sunday there was a huge violence that erupted on the premises and things were being vandalized and a lot of a damage that was been made on the uh, campus so you see that's how it all went around and then you see the family demanding a lot about the fall game and they also went on and approached the Madras High Court seeking for the uh, justice there the family was given and their order was met in fact where they had asked for the second autopsy as they say there are a lot of fresh injuries that have been noted on her body so they believe there was a, a sexual harassment as the family is alleging that so this is all something even despite of the post-mortem they did not believe what the report was and they had demanded for the second autopsy and they also so refused from collecting the uh, post uh, the body in fact as they said they won't be performing the last rites until and unless the justice has not been prevailed to them and the clear picture has not been in uh, you know, served to them so that had been the demand of the family there you see this whole uh, controversy and a lot of uh, ups and downs and a lot of twists and turns coming around in a week of time and where you see there was a political developments as well when there was on the other side the family developments going on who have lost the uh, daughter so that's something that we had got to see but of course uh, as Punima mentioned rightly uh, the Madras High Court in fact going heavily down on the state government as well as on the uh, family had uh, uh, said that the second post-mortem will be done but with that will be videographed in their uh, in the pre uh, uh, presence of the family members itself but the family now doesn't seem to be uh, uh, fine with the uh, the teams of the doctors that the Madras High Court has uh, formed so they want uh, uh, the, there are a lot more demands that the family is placing again now they are are likely to approach the Supreme Court as well as they say that the doctors that who will be conducting this whole procedure must be of you know, the someone whom they are going to point out. So now that has been the bigger demand from the family members. Ritu, one more question for you. Thank you for highlighting for our audiences what the demands, as you've just said, of the family members are and what they're hoping for. But if you could also tell our audiences now about the arrests that have taken place so far in the case. We were sharing with our audiences that more than 200 arrests have been taken place, including that of the school principal and the two teachers. Can you tell us more? Yes, aftermath of the violence, you know, the police had made a note of this whole violence and tried identified all of them who had, uh, in fact, created the damage on the premises and the ones who had, in fact, uh, the police believes, you know, who had been a part of the antisocial elements. So that has been the observation of the police and they went ahead for, for the arrest. So now what we are learning as the education minister himself said that during the uh, press conference that almost around 278 people are being arrested, among which 22 are uh, uh, minors. But but of course, more uh, uh, arrests are likely to happen because they are examining all the CCTV footages to identify who went uh, uh, more uh, over to the uh, uh, to erupt this whole violence on the premises. So more arrests are likely. But when we speak about the officials from the uh, school, uh, along with the principal secretary and the correspondent of the school, the two teachers are also been arrested, and now they are all been, uh, uh, in fact, taken into the 15-day uh, uh, judicial custody. Is what that the recent update that we have. All right, Ritu, thank you so much for bringing us those developments. Purnima.